actually I'm really happy to be at this conference because I'm hoping to get the answer to um, one question that's been on my mind ever since I took a job as a chief digital officer, which is what the hell is a chief digital officer? <laughs> I honestly have still don't really know and I think that everybody that has the title chief digital officer has a completely different job. I don't, I've seen no similarity. So I can tell you what it is in my shop, which is uh, all I can speak to. Uh, so I oversee um, all, uh, uh, all of the digital properties of NBC News, which includes, and I'll rattle these off in 15 seconds or left, NBCnews.com, Today.com, the soon-to-be-launched MSNBC.com, iVillage.com, TheGrio.com, NBCLatino.com, uh, BreakingNews.com, Newsvine.com, GardenWeb.com, and my all-time favorite, Astrology.com, which <laughs> at over, on, at another session we can talk about how that fits into a news division, but <laughs> I'll have to consult my charts on that one. But um, so that as well, well you saw as- the crystal ball. Yeah, so yeah, exactly, that yeah, the crystal, that's where the crystal ball comes in, exactly. <laughs> right. so I, they helped me see it's the future of digital media. But um, this is, uh, so it's, it's both the properties as well as, uh, you know, and, and maybe this is where it perhaps unique or maybe not unique mm -hmm. in my organization is, it, and I, I would imagine for many chief, chief digital officers it's the same thing. It's not just about, you know, running these proper, all the things that go into running a business, which is, you know, all this, those, those pictures, the crystal ball and the curiosity and the guesses and the hunches and the management of people. But I also feel like a big part of my responsibility is to help the entire news organization, whether it's a, a, a producer on the Today Show or a, you know, shooter in a, in a far off bureau for the entire organization to help everybody think about what it means to be a multi-platform organization. And anybody that's worked in a legacy news organization knows that's tough. I mean, a place like NBC News, people are so, so, so good at what they do. And in some ways, being so good at what you do, I think, is, can be a hindrance into thinking about how hmm. you change the way you, the change the way you work, the way you, you the change the way you think about the audience, change the way you think about, you know, how you release information over the course of the day. So it's, it's in two parts. And I, I would suspect, and, and it'll be, be interesting to see over the course of the day if other chief digital officers feel the way, same way, that it is the work and then it's sort of the cultural issues. Mm -hmm. So right. that's, right. but you know, that's to me, that's what makes it fun. I mean, right. the one commonality that I've had in every place that I've worked with, worked for, has been a brand that means something to the consumer. And while all of these, with the exception of uh, NPR, all of these organizations are about making money, of course, what I have loved about each place is that it's about, uh, it's about a service and providing a service to the public, to the consumer, beyond just you know, shareholder value. Right. So, I mean, that's sort of a yeah. very high level snapshot of, of what I do. Terrific, that's great, thank you. Um, first question, um, back in the sort of the spring time frame of, of 012, uh, right around that time, and I'm not don't know for certain whether you know whether it was initi this this was initiated sort of uh, as part of the announcement about the purchase of MSNBC.com, uh, or there was a separate. But it sort of it sort of dovetailed. It was <coughs> the announcement about the commitment to it, uh, an aggressive digital media strategy right. overall, uh, and uh, multi-platform programming and marketing. Uh, would love to hear your thoughts on that and exactly, and, and maybe talk a little bit about how that transition is going with MSNBC. Right. Uh, just one other, other uh, part of that. I know that at the time there was an announcement about a digital uh, uh, strategic development team in Seattle was going to sort of play an important sure. key role sort of looking ahead. So sure. you could share with so us. So first a little history yeah. for, uh, for those who don't know exactly what he's talking about. In 1996, um, Jack Welch, who was, of course, at the time the head of GE, and, and Bill Gates signed an agreement to create something called MSNBC, which was to be a cable channel and a digital property. Um, because, it, it, because every era thinks that you know, this is the, the be all and end all of all progress and knowledge, in 1996, the two uh, parties signed a 99 year <laughs> agreement <laughs> with no outs. I kid you not. So, um, so anyway, and, and marriage and, made in heaven. What's that? Marriage made in heaven. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> well, the interesting thing is, at the time, I mean, it, look, it made. I'm not knocking it. I understand what the relationship was about, but at the time, and it's interesting just to even think about the the lexicon of the day. The agreement said it was to cover the 
and I, I, this, this quote is emblazoned in my brain, the interactive delivery of news and information. Well, look at the, that word through the lens of 2013. What the hell does that mean? So um, anyway, long story short, um, it was a really, it, in many ways, it was a great, great thing. Um, it, it helped allow what was then called MSNBC.com to you know, rise into the top five of all news websites where it has remained ever since. But you know, over time, as the world has evolved around, around us, it ceased to make a lot of sense. First of all, uh, the way that the deal was structured, uh, and, and this was true up until this past July, the newsroom for NBC News, the, you know, the, the, the leader in television news um, in this country, one of the great powerhouses of the, around the world of news gathering, the newsroom for NBC News on all digital platforms was based on the Microsoft campus in Redmond, Washington. So this is, you know, you can imagine how that would be difficult in terms of workflow, culture. It, it really became very difficult. Again, it's not a knock on any individual. It just was not really set up for the way that we need to function in a multi-platform world. Anyway, long story short, we severed the deal uh, uh, by, by mutual agreement, which was the only way to do it, because there was no other way to unwind this deal this past July, because you know, just like we wanted to own and control our destiny, well, Microsoft did too. And we were both sort of locked into exclusivities and, and uh, commitments that you know, was holding us both back. So we have, it's, it's a, a very happy divorce. We still have a relationship. We still talk to each other every day. Um, but we are now, we've moved the center of gravity of, uh, to New York. Uh, but, but there is still, but it's very important. There are incredibly talented people that were on still are on that Redmond campus, uh, that uh, campus on uh, Microsoft campus in Redmond, Washington, including a lot of really wonderful um, technologists. So you know, I, I did not wanting to follow in the path of many others that, that acquire a company or something like that and go, oh, we know how to do it better, go away. We want to keep that talent and the notion of having them separate from 30 Rock, where they can think about innovation was something very appealing. So we're creating, we're going to be moving to downtown Seattle, and it's going to be the NBC News Innovation Center that will do a lot of the, continue to do a lot of the innovative technology work as well as be, continue to be a bureau uh, for the organization. So we're still in the process of integrating and transitioning. You know, again, it's, it was a 16-year relationship, and there were a lot of complications, including the fact that Microsoft um, actually to this day is still the sales organization, and we're in the process of transitioning, and. You know, we've got ad ops and you know, all, all those little pieces of that chart. Each one of those is a, you know, the project mm. managers have their 600, those grids with the 600 rows and you know, mm. we've all been there. Yeah, absolutely, great. Um, we, we clearly are sort of at this point in time, uh, the evolution of, of technology, digital technology, uh, where sort of the digital technology is intersecting with traditional news uh, uh, distribution, gathering distribution, um, uh, customer, building customer relationships. Uh, if you could talk for a few minutes about how you are tackling uh, the, 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 the changes that are occurring in the market, uh, literally, when we talk about breaking news, very, very hard to do in an environment where breaking news uh, can just be you know, one person just with one tweet that just sort of takes off like wildfire around the world. You know, what role then does a traditional news gathering organization play in that uh, sort of in that process? So maybe if you could talk a little bit about how you're adapting, how NBC is right. adapting to the new technology. Well, it, it's tough, as I'm sure everybody in this room can agree. It's what makes it so complex. It's also what makes it so interesting, is to try to not just keep up, but try to sort, sort of stay one mm. step ahead. And there's, I, I wish I had the silver bullet. I, if anybody does, I would love to hear it. But um, you know, it's, it's a combination of making sure that we're playing in every space, making sure that we are staying true to what our brand represents. So we have to carry those brand values with us, whether it's a 140-character tweet or a documentary or what have you on, on whatever platform. At the same time, we also have to, it's become a cliche, but it, it, it's still tough to execute. We have to make sure that we are at the same time becoming the instruments of our own disruption which is very difficult culturally, as I'm sure most people in this room can attest, uh, which is 
how do we make sure that we don't you know, become so defensive about who we are that we fail to capitalize on, on, on what's happening in the industry? So two examples of how that plays for us. One is we have a small company, I guess for lack of a better word, it's eight people that we own called Breaking News, which was uh, founded by Corey Ber Bergman, who is a, he is a full-time employee of NBC Universal, and this is a wholly owned subsidiary of NBC Universal. But we keep, they are, they are, they're on the West Coast, they're in a separate building. We are you know, trying to give them, their brilliant team, give them the room and the leash to try to disrupt us. And, um, and it can be uncomfortable sometimes because breaking news aggregates news organizations. They do not favor NBC News. If they did, it would, it would destroy the trust that they have with their audience. At the same time, what they are learning about um, a mobile first approach and a mobile first newsroom is going to help the larger organization. The second area of disruption for us that I think about that you know, people, you know, again, the cliche, what keeps you up at night is around video. The fact that we are the, you know, the leader in streaming video scares the shit out of me because the fact is we are, because we have so much television that we chop into bits and we stream um, on our website, that we offer on demand on our website that is so successful, would make it really easy to say, oh, we, we've got this thing nailed. Look how smart we are. Look how we get video on the web. Well, no, we don't. We get how to chop up television shows and put them on the web, and there's still an audience for that. And it's again, it's very easy as a legacy news organization to look at something like a, you know, I'm just picking at random, like a Now This News or what HuffPo Live is doing, going, ah, oh, amateurs, what do they know about TV? We're NBC News. We've been doing this for 60 years. Well, I, you know, I have this image of this Harvard Business uh, School case study from 10 years from now. How about NBC News? owned video and squandered it because they failed to disrupt themselves. We failed to disrupt ourselves by creating video that is not about television. To, tr to, do, to break the mold of what uh, television news is with your beautiful sets and your lights and your expensive packages. Not to not break the mold about journalistic integrity. That's always got to remain constant. So we're trying to blow that up at the same time that we take advantage of it. So that's two examples. It's very difficult to pull off. It's very difficult to anyone for, to pull off, but in addition to move the culture. NBC in prime time was, was number one in the fall with hits like The Voice and, and Sunday Night Football. And uh, this past month, uh, with both of those two hit shows uh, on hiatus, uh, was, had some ratings difficulty. Um, and that is on the, enter on the entertainment side of the shop. And um, again, I'm not involved yeah. with that day to day. Yeah. But I think your larger question about you know, uh, how a digital division supports television, I, I, I would say that, um, I, and I give credit to, uh, to my boss, who told me in a recent meeting with her, she said to me, Pat Philly Crichelle, she said, I don't want you worrying about driving tune into television. And I have to say, I think that was actually an incredibly brave statement. Uh, because mm. it, further to mm. this theme about disruption, if, if we think about our digital platforms only as a big marketing play for television, we, that would be a huge mistake for all mm -hmm. kinds of, about 15 different reasons that I could rattle off right now. Um, look, to the extent that, um, you know, that we do help ratings, that's terrific, but that can't be our job. I think of it more as a, you know, as a, as a virtuous circle, which is, um, you know, we are, television drives to the web, the, uh, the web certainly does drive to television to some extent, but creates content that, that, that can then be used on television. But it, it's got to be organic. Um, otherwise, it will, the audience won't buy it. You can't, people can see through that. We need to give people a reason to come to our digital properties for their own sake, not because they are a spin-off of whatever's on television. It's what um, you know, people call the, um, you know, the moron syndrome. And the moron syndrome is, for moron, this story, go to you know, NBCnews.com. That ain't yeah. it. I know, I love that. that. I wish I could take credit for that, but I, but I can't. That was Steve <laughs> Kappas. Um, but uh, it, but where, where we are advantaged by television, and this is a big deal, is in advertising. Mm -hmm. Because the, there is an incredible power in, in you know, what every company's got its own name for it, but in 360-degree selling. 
and um, the power for uh, for marketers of being able to have uh, go across platforms, television, web, mobile, second screen, which is a big area of focus for us. We have an investment in Zbox, is very powerful because they can they see the value social. Excuse me, mm -hmm, they mm -hmm. see the value. Why don't I come back to social in yeah. a second? They see the value of following the customer or the consumer through all of those different right. platforms. Right. Social is very important. You know, I, people say, oh, digital is social. Social is kind of a different animal over here because social is, when you think about tune-in for television, I think social actually has a huge role to play solely for television as well as for web. It's almost in between, and when I say web, I mean web, mobile, the whole devices, the watch, the glasses, the whole thing. Um, but social, I think, specifically for television can help uh, feed the community a, a great deal. Second screen is, it, first of all, we are like the first batter is not up at the first inning of the second screen game. It, this is, I truly believe, and I, I try to stay out of the prediction business, but I think whoever can capture the second screen phenomenon, it's going to be a massive, massive win. And, and, and I will say, in the spirit of full disclosure, we have put a, a financial commitment, the company Comcast, NBCU, on Zbox as, as the second screen provider. Um, now, people have created their own second screen experiences on their own through Twitter, Facebook, what have you. You've all seen the statistics about how many people are on one or two devices at the same time they're watching television. But what's exciting about trying to capture that second screen um, experience is, it, to me, that, that when the light bulb for me went off when I realized it rewards live viewing, which is unbelievable. In our time-shifted world where we're all watching House of Cards on our own schedule. I'm so frustrated because I've seen the whole series now and I can't talk to anybody <laughs> about it. But, um, but w with second screen, if second screen rewards live viewing because you, you want to be part of the dialogue, that is an incredible thing for, for a television company because it is about being part of the community in real time. And so, so on Zbox, for example, you've got, you know, you've got everything, you know, it, it's, it's still a product in development. You've got everything you want. You've got you know, a curated Twitter feed, you've got information about the show, you've got, you could create your own special chat with your friends who are watching at the same time, this thing called Z-Tag. So it, it, it makes you want to watch the show live so you could be part of the larger community. It's also an amazing advertiser opportunity. It's what we're talking about, yeah. a marketer stream. Yeah. They've got you here, they've got you there, you've got it over here. So um, that, that's a little bit different because that's very specifically about just about television viewing. And just like social, I think it kind of sits in between the digital platforms and, the, and television. So that's an exception, I think. You know, d as everybody in this room knows, you know, digital does not mean one thing. Digital means a thousand things. And that's what you know, makes our job so I I frustrating and exciting at the same time. Certainly not boring. User-generated is, is, is a term that, to me, is as vague as chief digital officer. It means so many <laughs> different things yeah. from you know, the amateur, you know, the kid on the block with his camera you know, pretending to be uh, Mr. Newsman to uh, what my preferred sense of what, how we engage with user-generated, which is the way people engage with the content. I mean, I'm less interested uh, in the kid on the corner trying to capture a scene in his local neighborhood than I am about the way, the interaction that we have with our audience. That to me is a, is a much more valuable form of, of user generated content. The kind of ways that two way relationship that we have with the news through Twitter, through Facebook, where we get a dialogue going about stories. And the reporters and the producers and you know, some of us are all engaging at the same time. That to me is much more fascinating. And you can capture that in a second screen experience in real time. Well, right. Thank you. This I'm has so been delightful. sorry this is thank so short. So yeah, no, thank you really so much. All right. Thank you. Appreciate it.